Bye, g'day guys, it's Sam here from Build Not Bought and today I am in Victoria. Now it's not often that I'm this way, so I'm in Melbourne and I've come down. I had to say g'day to my friends at Harrop Engineering, see what they've been up to. All right guys, so we're back here. It feels like I was here just yesterday. Now, they've pretty much given me free reign. Look, no cameras. Special, special privilege today. So I actually, last time I was here, I filmed a shop tour. Now this is the home of where superchargers get built. Whole lot of performance stuff. Also the home of the e-locker. So when we're talking, doing a full drive sense, this is where e-lockers get made and manufactured. So I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time in this area because if you wanna watch the shop tour, I'll drop a link in that down below. I'm really here to sort of see what they've been working on and the projects that they're sort of developing. They've always got something going on. And last time I was here, I saw that they were actually working on a Land Rover. So this was like a class eight, like race car basically. It had an LS7 in it. So I've come to see what's going on with that thing, but they've also told me that they've got some other cool stuff working on as well. So we'll head down to the performance center to see what's going on down there and um, leave these guys to do all the machining and all the fun stuff. Let's go. Oh, look at that. So of course the rig is here also. Because I'm here for the four drive shows, it's the first time the patrol's in Melbourne, so we may, fingers crossed, I'll see if the boys can let us get this thing on the dyno so we can do another pull and obviously let the experts take a look at the uh, whole setup because it's the Harrop blower, it's their cam, it's their sort of system, so I'd love for them to sort of have a look at the tune, tweak it if need be, and get, it, get the thing running awesome. So we'll do that in a sec. But before we get to that uh, Land Rover, they've shown me something pretty awesome here. Now this hasn't been released at all. It's something they're working on. This is sort of their R&D center. And believe it or not, you know what car this is, right? It's a bloody Jimny. So Jimny's are starting to get pretty popular and they've told me they're working on a supercharger kit for this engine. So it's like a petrol four cylinder, like tiny motor, and it puts out about 75 kilowatts. Now with this blower system, they're hoping they can pretty much double that power. So we're talking 100% increase in power, so that's pretty awesome. Can you imagine having a little chimney like this size pumping out like 150 kilowatts? How fun would that be? Now, I'm not sure how far in development this has been, but I'll see if I can convince the guys to give me the keys and start this thing up and just see if it has that little one. I'm so curious to hear how this thing would sound with a little supercharger on a four-cylinder petrol engine. It'd be like a little bumblebee. Oh, a Ram, all right. So when you're watching this, it was about two days ago that I put up a post just pulling the piss basically about me wanting to swap the patrol for a Ram. I mean, come on, why would I do that? Why would it be so ridiculous? But they're a popular car and there's a supercharger on one of these. Now these kits, as you're watching this video, they've probably been released, but at the moment, there's probably only five or so Rams that actually have this kit installed. So. The 1500 Ram comes out with the petrol V8. It's a 5.7 litre and they've actually put the 2650 kit on there. So a massive blower and it really helps with the power increase. I'll, I'll see if I can remember the numbers. It's something like 320 or 330 kilowatts. I don't want to get that wrong. That's sort of the power they're getting out of this conversion just as a base package. So it's a massive increase over stock, which is around 250 or something around there. By the time you're watching this, they've probably hit the market, but that, that's a real exciting thing for these Rams. And that's probably part of the reason why I thought, oh, hang on a second, I could consider getting one of these. Supercharger V8, it's got my name written all over it. Oh, oh, oh. Look what I got, all right, I got the keys to the Ram, so let's see how this thing sounds. Now I've been in one of these once before, but I didn't get to start it. I'm not sure what's been done on this exhaust wise. Oh yes, look at that. Now I'm not one of those people to just rev the shit out of an engine when it's cold, so. Oh yeah. Oh my God, that's part of the reason why I want one of these. But I'm not sure whether they'd be suitable for the four-wheel drive tracks in Australia. I don't know. 
I want you to comment down below, do you think a RAM would be suitable for four-wheel driving in Australia? Or do you reckon if everyone gets RAMs, all the tracks will open up bigger and wider so all the cars will fit anyway? That's a good prediction. Yeah, I'll roll with that one. Comment down below what you reckon. Yeah, it kind of makes me want one. Look how cool the key is. Bloody awesome. Oh, look, believe it or not, I didn't think I'd get the keys to this, but we've got the Jimny keys as well. No idea what this is going to do. Oh, it's an auto. But it's just cool to see that it'll actually run. <laughs> this is probably the first supercharged Jimny in Australia. What do you reckon? Actually, the first time I've actually been to one of these. They're quite nice. Look at all that going on. Is that factory? If you're a Jimny owner, tell me if that's factory, because that's bloody awesome. It looks like it's almost aftermarket. Or well, maybe not. Man, these things are like more than that. <laughs> It's so small and quiet, but what it does do is when you rev it, it makes the car sort of lean over. Has that, I guess you could call it torque. That is awesome. Here it is, the Land Rover. We'll get this thing pulled inside so we can see it a bit better, but basically this is sort of why I'm here. Now, flashback to when I did the shop tour before and the Land Rover was um, kind of in its almost 50% stage of development. Now this thing is completely custom and they're designing it to be pretty much raced like for Fink and stuff like that as a class eight race truck. It's got a 440, I think, um, big block LS7 motor. So it's bloody insane. It's got hurricane intake tuned up to the max. Now, I think they've got it running. So I'm gonna see if I can ask the boys, put this thing on the dyno and see what it actually pulls. And then fingers crossed as well, we'll put the patrol on and do some back-to-back -back runs. What do you reckon about that? Stay tuned guys, let's get this thing on the dyno, get the patrol on there as well and see if we can punch some big numbers. This is our uh, Land Rover, a bit of a project car. We use it for a number of things, but um, it's got the Hurricane uh, manifold on it. It's a 440 cubic inch, 427 blocked aftermarket heads. One of our products that we like to, like all of our products, we like to design. We test them. Um, in particular, this one's using the, the Hurricane manifold. There's a lot of custom parts on the car. Like uh, it really highlights what we can actually do here. A look around the car will show um, most of the componentry has been made uh, here at Harrop, you know, from differentials to axles to suspension components, um, all the fabrication under the bonnet, dry sum. Okay, so we're just going to give the, uh, the car a run on the dyno. The beauty of the hub in particular is its accuracy and its repeatability. Um, anytime you have a car on a tyre, the tyre itself introduces a lot of errors uh, due to the, the pressure, the stickiness, the tread depth, the size. We remove all that with the hub dyno, so if there's a problem um, with the car, we can pick it up straight away because the differences aren't due to some other environmental or tyre-related problem. Of pulls. What? So what was the peak power in the end and the torque? Uh, 352. 352 kilowatt. At the hubs. Yep. Um, now this car doesn't have a lock-up converter, so... Yeah, you're getting slip in there. We'll be losing a little bit through the converter as well. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's not too bad. Sweet. Could you get a torque figure or...? And we're around 450 newton metres there. So you can yeah. sort of see this area I'm indicating. Yeah kind of follows the more natural curve you'd expect. This up here, this is actually just torque Bit of a false, yeah. 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 Okay, all right. Well, get, I guess get the patrol on and see what happens there. No worries. First time it's been on a hub dyno, so this will be interesting. <laughs> right, I'm just gonna show you because there's been obviously a lot of forward and backward uh, work between me and the engineers here at Harrop because mine is such a custom application with that blower belt. So now we're actually running that APK setup, which means the belt slip should be eliminated. Now that was a major problem before whenever I got it dyno tuned. So it's actually never been tuned when it's had full power. So I'm thinking today we can take it right to the red line, see how much boost it's producing on the top end and really get an accurate number of the power and torque that it's putting out. So that's why we're here today. Right, so it's time for my to go on, but here's the problem. An issue I have with a lot of dynos, it's too tall. So I'm sitting at like 2.5 or something and the door of the dyno is 2.3. So I've taken the max tracks off the roof. I'm gonna pull the air out of the tires, so run it right down low to like, I don't know, five PSI or something, and see if we can squeeze it under the door to get it in and strapped on. 
Oh. It fits. <laughs> oh. Oh, I've pretty much got the patrol strapped up now. So we're going to do a couple of runs. He's going to have a look first at the tune and make sure that the fuel and air and everything's looking good. Look at that top end power. Now that the belt's not slipping, it's probably going to be wrong because we've never actually been able to get it to that point to tune it properly. So we'll get that sorted and then just do a power run and see what it does on the hub dyno. Pretty excited about this. That sounds like a bloody good engine. All right, there we go. So that was sort of the best pull we're gonna to get today. I reckon it was 652 horsepower. What was the torque at? Yeah, 652 horsepower and 885 newton meters. All right, there we go. Yeah, and we now, are limited at the moment by not enough fuel. Yeah, that's right. So the orange lines of fuel there, so at yeah. about, what's that, 4.8? It's yeah. landing out a bit. Yeah, so I think at the moment it's got that 342 wall bro in it and it's about 255 liters per minute. So you bump that up to what, like a 460 or even a 340 or something. Yeah. But no belt slip. No belt slip. Fix that bit at least. There we go. With more fuel, we could sneak a bit more timing in it and yeah. that number would come up some more. Yeah, beauty. All right, there we go. Happy days. Cracked the 500 horsepower mark. So obviously this is a hub dyno. So when you've got the big tires on, it's slightly different, but I think it's, it's definitely enough power for um, what I want, what I need. It's a touring vehicle with a bit more punch. All right, guys, so that's been the day at Harrop Engineering. We've come down. I'm not in Victoria very often, so I was also to come down and see what these guys are up to. Finally got the patrol on the dyno, on the hub dyno, with the experts that developed the gear, so it was awesome to get that on there. They're happy with the tune, change that fuel pump, and I can get a bit more out of it. So all, all around a good day. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed, and um, I'll definitely come back here and see what these boys are up to. Try and make it an annual thing. I'll see you next time. Peace. I've just spent three months doing engine upgrades on my motor here, and I've been told I'm not allowed to turn the key until you press subscribe. Please press subscribe.